Alright guys, I just got into the office, so let me go to work and I'll talk to you guys in a second. You are my pill, I swallow it. Take me away, you never land. What kind of all right guys, what is up YouTube? I'm here at work right now, everyone has left. I'm literally the only one in the office right now, which is why I'm able to talk as loud as I can because there's literally no one else here. If you're watching this video, you're watching this video because you wanna know what it takes to get that first coding interview, that first interview at a job. When you get that interview, does that necessarily mean you'll for sure 100% guarantee get the job? No, it does not mean that whatsoever, but if you really wanna know what it takes to get the job, please watch this video and I'll see you guys in a second. So someone asked me this question on Instagram and they asked, what does it take? What is it that you need to be able to do to get your first coding interview? Now, why am I answering this question? I get this question all the time, but I usually don't answer it. But after speaking with literally hundreds of people and getting DMs on Instagram, on Twitter, people leaving comments here on YouTube as well, people are always asking, what does it take? How do you land that first interview? Now, something that you should know is that someone like myself, I am someone that has moved from job to job. You know, before I even became a developer, I didn't have a degree. And because of that, I had to go from job to job trying to learn how and learn really what it takes to interview, but also what it takes to land that job, that, that land that interview to, in order to get that job. So the interview is very important. People always think about just the coding question, right? How do you, how do you pass the, the whiteboard test? How do you prepare for an interview? But more than anything, first of all, is how do you get the interview? How do you even get that first phone call interview? What is it that you need to do? What is it that you're doing wrong? What is it that you need to do on your resume? Now, this is something I wanna talk about right now. Now, landing a coding interview, I'll tell you this, is not easy. For many people who are learning code right now, a lot of people don't even have a portfolio yet. Right? A lot of people are just jumping into HTML, CSS, but they wanna know what it takes. Well, I'm the right person to follow because I did become a developer in three months. I got my first coding job after studying code for just a couple months. But the first thing that ha you have to take into account when it comes to applying to a job is this. Number one, are you ready? Right? Are you ready to even are you ready to even apply to get a job in the first place? And what I mean by this is when I first became a developer two and a half years ago, the demand was a little different. Now you need to know libraries and frameworks like React. You need to know a framework like Angular or a library like Vue.js. Right? You need to know some kind of you need to know some kind of library. If you go to Indie.com, Craigslist.com, uh, you go to Monster.com or whatever, you're going to see the requirements to even get a job at these places. That number one, you have to know a library. Uh, and which is true, but the question then is, right, do you even at least have the basics down? Do you even have a portfolio? I know many people right now who aren't even ready yet, who haven't even built the first website yet, and they're trying to apply their job. Number one, to get that interview, first of all, the number one thing you need to have, even before a resume, is that you have to be able to have a portfolio. And what I mean by portfolio, even when it comes to something very basic, at least a website, a website that talks about yourself, a website that talks about you, right? That represents who you are and something that you can show that you built it. Now, you can use Bootstrap and that's fine, right? But are you able to really customize a site, design it well, well, it matches your personality? So number one, do you even have a website? Now, if you're trying to apply to a job then you know how to code at least a little bit, then I'm pretty sure you have a website. Secondly, number two, to be able to land a first interview, I'll tell you this, before I landed my first job as a developer, and this is what I really thought, I'm never gonna get hired. It's gonna take me a year, year and a half, maybe two years to become a developer. So, but what I did is that, you know what? I might as well apply to three to 10 jobs every single day. What do I have to lose? Let's say I don't get that job, they don't respond to me. Guess what? Even if I didn't apply, within three or four weeks, that job I w could have applied to is gone. So what did I tell myself? While I'm learning code, while I'm making a website, this is what I did. I started applying to jobs every single day. And I mean like 10 jobs, if not even more. And so while you're finally taking that initiative to build a website, make it a goal to apply every single day. Every day. And I'm gonna tell you this, no one's gonna respond to you. You can send out 100 applications, no one will probably even respond to you. But if you send out 200 applications, guess what? At least one person might give you that opportunity. I applied, let's say it took, I applied to jobs for about three weeks every single day, and after three weeks, I finally got the interview. Now you have to understand, right? 
when I got this interview, I didn't think I was gonna get hired. I thought this was like, okay, this is a scam. It's probably not a real company. And what ended up happening, they gave me the job. Okay, next. Next tip I would suggest is this, your resume. The one mistake I think a lot of people make, there are many mistakes, right? But one of the biggest mistakes that people tend to do when it comes to their resume is that they tend to just put their picture on your resume. But what can happen is that when someone sees your resume, if you put your picture on there, the first thing they see, the first thing they see before your skills, before your website, before your projects is your face. I don't care if you're the most good looking person in the world, what will happen and what can happen is that some people might subconsciously have some prejudice about you you don't even realize or they might subconsciously judge you and based off your face and without even looking at your skills they might already reject you and i'm not saying people do this on purpose but what happens when it comes to resumes is that people do not care about how you look like when it comes to a developer at least, right? They don't care about that whatsoever. But what it is that they do care about is do you have the skills to do it? Okay, next, next, next. Now, when it comes to your resume, another mistake that a lot of people tend to do, they'll show you all of your experience as a customer service I get, maybe working for McDonald's or Burger King, right? And then at the bottom, at the way bottom of the resume, what people tend to do is that they only show their skills, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I'll tell you this, first of all, that's not even enough. When it comes to your resume, I'll tell you this, companies tend to not care about your past jobs. All they want to know is that, can you code? So, yes, you should put your past, your, your experience on there, but even on the description, on your experiences, try to only show what it is that that, that it's important that can help you as a developer. Even more than that too, don't put your skills to develop at the bottom, put it at the way top. Don't put your picture and put your website. Make your resume as short as possible. Second to that as well, what's very important is a cover letter too. When you go before you even apply to a job, what's very important is a cover letter and this is why. Your, your resume does not show your personality, but what a cover letter does is that to a piece of paper, to a piece of paper, a cover letter, what it does is it, it puts the human side to that resume. It puts the, it shows your personality on the resume that you can't really show through that. So when it comes to a cover letter, you need to research the company. You need to write what you like about the company, the culture, what is it that they represent, and why is it, why can you be a good fit to that culture? Now the reason I say this is because it's one of the main reasons I believe I got hired at this company is not because of my skills. I am not as good as everyone thinks. I, was, I still have so much to learn. But one of the main things that I think gave me this opportunity to work at a great company is number one, because of my personality, and that I show that I could potentially fit with the culture too. Okay, the last thing, okay. The last tip I wanna give to help you get that first interview is that you have to understand that it will take a lot of time. You have to apply everywhere. Um, you're going to get discouraged. You're going to want to give up, right? Um, you're going to want to do many different things, um, like maybe think if it's not for you. But I'll tell you this, this is just like any other job you're trying to apply to. You have to apply everywhere, but you have to really try to do everything you can, even the small things to make yourself stand out. Make sure you work in that website, right? Make sure that you show your skills, learn and push yourself to learn code in ways you never thought you could. But even more than that, when it comes to to getting that job, to even land an interview, what happens is yes, you might get a phone call, but a lot of people fail here. Why do a lot of people fail at a phone interview before you get the actual in-person interview? A lot of people fail because of this. A lot of people fail because they think that on a phone interview that they're worried about your skills. That is not true at all whatsoever. What it is that they're more worried about when it comes to a phone interview is, will your personality match with the culture? Are you crazy or are you normal? <laughs> And to see if that there's nothing weird about you, or maybe are you prideful, are you arrogant, do you think you know it all? All of these things are extremely important and vital. You have to really make sure that you know how to sell yourself. It might be a FaceTime interview, it might be a Google video chat interview, um, it, it, it might be through Skype, it might, through, it might just be a phone interview, you never know what it is. And more than anything, at the most important part when it comes to the phone interview, you have to be able to sell yourself. I gotta go, I just tried to make a really short video for you guys, I hope this was as short as I could possibly get it. Um, but other than that, man, uh, what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna put a link to my resume down below in the description. I'm gonna remove all my personal information, I'll put, of course, like fake address and fake everything. If anyone wants to check it out, figure out what I do, since people have been asking for so long, I'm gonna put a link in the description below for my resume and a cover letter. I'm actually gonna put this down there. It takes time to get where I am and even the techniques I use to build my resume is it, it, that took time as well and so I want to be able to share that with you guys so if anyone wants to check it out I'll put it in the link description 
description below or even this too if anyone here wants me to actually review your resume and give you some tips on that as well or even your website i'll put a link in the description below to that as well so anyways i hope you guys like this video if not please let me know if you have any suggestions i'm sure i missed hundreds of different things on tips to help you get that first developer job and if you have any other suggestions please leave a comment below like this video if you haven't checked and subscribe if you could thank you guys this is Krishan. this is life of a developer and I'm by myself at the office, dude. I gotta go, peace.